Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and welcome to another episode of Days of Night. I think I've got a pretty interesting episode for you today. Recently, Fuji Color Pro 400H was discontinued, and while checking my freezer to see what film I was going to use in the next episode, I came across some Fuji Pro NPH 400. Fuji Color Pro NPH 400 was made from 2002 to 2004 and it was renamed and rebranded as 400H. So technically, this is about the oldest Pro 400H that you can get your hands on. You can see it even says new on the box. Now, I've been told that this film was frozen since new. I can't be certain though, so I will be taking some liberties today. As you know, I will overexpose with expired film by about one stop per decade. Now there is some argument as to how many stops per decade you should overexpose depending on black and white and color and even slide film. However, I find that one stop per decade is enough for my purposes. You might find you get different results. The truth is though, is that from roll to roll, nobody knows for sure. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Chicago Bill for donating these rolls. I actually got about a dozen of them from him really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out. And by now you might be asking what camera I'm using. Actually, you won't be asking that because it's probably in the title and thumbnail. Today I'm going to be shooting with the original Spotmatic, the Pentax Spotmatic SP. And I'm not just going to be shooting with one. I've actually got two of these to test out. I figured I might as well see how the light seals and shutter work on both of them. Now, unfortunately, they take mercury batteries, and though there are equivalent batteries that you can put in, I don't have them, so I'm going to be using my handheld light meter. So, I will be shooting two rolls of NPH 400 today. At least two partial rolls. I'll see how it goes. It is currently minus 22 Celsius with the wind chill. I don't know how long I'm going to want to be outside today. But with all that being said, let's get started. Here are my two Spotmatics. I'm going to go over each of them and just have a quick look and see if anything buggers up. If it does, then I'm going to be only shooting one Pentax today. But, uh, you know, I've had a look at them and I did have a problem with one of the lenses here. This is the 28 f3.5 and the other one wasn't closing down properly, but this one is. So I'm happy for that. I'm happy that I got two of them. And then on the other camera here, I've got a Soligor 135mm f3.5. And it is in seemingly working condition. But yeah, let's have a closer look at the cameras. By the way, these cameras are M42 screw mount. So any lens with an M42 screw mount is going to fit just fine on this camera, which gives a compatibility which is just fantastic and is probably why these are still so popular. I'm going to have a closer look at the newer of the two. This one's serial number is 2483987. First off, you can't really see it, but the front seal is in fine condition. Just gave it a bit of a blowout. Let's have a listen at the shutter. That sounded pretty good to me. And looking at the inside, this is a little dirty around the seals, but I had a Spotmatic once with a rusted door and it worked out just fine. So a dirty inside isn't always indication that the seals have deteriorated to the point of light leaks, which is why we're putting a roll through it today. But the most important thing, the shutter, seemed to do the job 
here is my second Pentax Spotmatic, serial number 1418844. This one I just blew out. It was overall cleaner, but there was one particular spot around here that was pretty dirty. It had some brown dust of some kind. Not sure where that came from. To me, when you advance, this one sounds a bit more grindy. Not too sure how that's going to go, but the shutter sounded the same to me, so who knows. Okay, let's load them with some film. Both of my films expired in December 2004. As you can see, they are marked new, so this is probably one of the first, if not the first batch, of NPH 400. Pretty typical information here, how to handle it, how to shoot it in different conditions, in English and French, that's interesting. Film canister itself. I'm a big fan of purple, so I like the label. Nothing much else to report here. Let's get it loaded. Okay, camera's loaded. Nothing to do now but bundle up and head on out. Okay folks, I've arrived downtown and I've got two basic challenges today. The first one is to actually find some color, though it will be interesting to see how this expired film renders snow, which is white. I mean, the ultimate color if you think about it. You know, I do want to get a little bit of actual, actual color into the photo. It's obviously going to be a pop of color. Then the other challenge is going to be, you know, how much do I overexpose? Now you're supposed to overexpose by about a stop or a stop and a half in snowy situations though there is a lot of concrete around here so I might not be doing that for every single shot but I am going to be doubling up on my exposures I'm going to shoot one at whatever my light meter says and then I'm going to go a stop beyond that for insurance purposes just in case this film you know for whatever reason um, wasn't refrigerated or put in the freezer um, I'm pretty sure Chicago Bill said most of it, though he didn't define which was or which wasn't. I kind of feel like this film was because at least these two are identical. So, um, yeah, it's all guesswork, really. I won't know until I, you know, until I see the film, which is exactly why I'm doing this. Now, the other unfortunate thing is that I'm going to have to mask up and I think in this case, I'm going to wear two masks because that's been the recommendation of other places. Canada's not recommending it just yet, but uh, Dr. Fauci says two masks is better. And that's just the world that we live in right now. And uh, there are quite a few variants that are going around. So, you know, as much as I don't want to, uh, I don't think my bandana is going to be cutting it anymore so I'm gonna be messing up my beard today but you know the pandemic is inconvenient newsflash 
I also feel like with the cold that it's probably just a good idea. But that's the state of things, unfortunately. Oh, there we go. I am secure. My face is snug as a bug in a rug. All I gotta do now is pay for parking and get started. Well, it certainly is cold. It's definitely hard on the eyes, especially when you're looking in a viewfinder and you're like trying to keep your eyeball nice and open and you've got this crosswind just blowing right into your eyeball. So, yeah. I'm probably on shot number 15 to 20 on both cameras, but I only paid for an hour of parking. So I did see a couple of places on the way down that I want to stop at on the way back. Okay, I'm back in the car. It is so cold out. It's still minus 21 with the wind chill, even though it's one in the afternoon. It's supposed to be like up to minus 10 or something like that without the wind chill. Without the wind chill, it's still minus 15. What can I say? I am Canadian, but I'm a disgrace to being able to handle Canadian winters. So on the way down, I took a different route than I normally do and I saw a few interesting uh, locations that I knew I would want to shoot on the way back. So that's how I'm going to try and uh, use up the rest of my film. If I don't use up the rest of my film, no big deal. Those who have been following me for years know that uh, I have no problems just uh, developing a partial roll of film. Better to have wasted film than sleeves full of photos that you don't care about. And by that I mean don't just finish a roll for the sake of finishing a roll. You're just gonna end up with a bunch of mediocre photos. Reach the first location. It is an abandoned Napa Auto Parts. Not abandoned. Uh, there's a sign saying they moved. But who knows, this thing's gonna be repainted or knocked down or something at some point. So my goal is to capture it while it's still in its current abandoned but not demolished state. Okay, I'm at my third location. I decided to skip the second location because it wasn't as interesting on the way back as it seemed on the way there. Um, this third location, which is now my second location, is a church that has been, I swear to God, under some kind of construction for what seems like, I want to say five or six years. It's got the, it's got wood scaffolding all around it it looks really interesting, so I'm hoping the winter will add a little something extra to it. I've shot it before, but I've never gotten anything stellar out of it. And then however much film I've got left, that'll be it. I've already shot more than the equivalent of a roll today, so I figure that's a win in itself. Okay, I did manage to finish off one of the rolls. For most of the day, I had been doubling up on my shots, but for the last little bit, I've been tripling up on it. I just have no idea what the exposure is going to be like. It's an overcast day, there's snow on the ground, so I should be shooting a stopover anyway. And of course the other thing too is, is I have no idea what the shutter is like. That uh, advanced lever on the one camera did seem pretty off. I wouldn't be surprised if I had some issues, maybe some advancing issues. I was watching the crank on the other side to make sure it was advancing with my lever pull, and it was so it's at least moving somewhat. Yeah, the next time you see me, I will be a lot warmer and in the dark room. All right, folks. I am in the last stage of my development. Well, second last stage if you count photo flow. I'm just adding the stabilizer. And then I will be ready to show the results. Computer, give me a one minute countdown. So while that is stabilizing, let's review. 
I have been using Fuji Color Pro NPH 400, um, two rolls of it in two Spotmatics that I'm also testing. So my concern is, did I get the exposure right on the NPH 400? And do I have light leaks in the camera or worse? Who knows? Um, the chances of both cameras working perfectly, probably pretty slim, but you never know. And you know, that's what this show's all about. I've said it before is the unpredictability of the results. Um, yeah. Has it not been a minute already? <laughs> there we go. Let's pour the stab back in. Computer, cancel timer. As always, wish me luck from the future. So unlike black and white, I'm not going to be able to tell exactly how they turned out just by looking at them, but I'll at least be able to tell if there's light leaks or if there's some crazy exposure issue. First roll. First roll that I pulled out is the wide angle. From what I can tell so far, and this might not be confirmed, when I did a set of three exposures, the third exposure, that is the most exposed, looks the best. I do not see any light leaks. Now, I did spend a lot of time in my bag, but generally speaking, if there's light leaks, you know, they're gonna show up. They're gonna show up even if you have your camera out for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna stick this in the photo flow, then I'm gonna open up the second spool. Okay, so this will be the 135 millimeter Soligor. Interesting. To me, the exposures look a little more solid. Again, I'll have to wait till I check the scans, but I do not see any light leaks. It's a solid roll. It's as good as anything I've seen. Uh, I gotta say that that is incredibly promising for these Spotmatics because I'm gonna sell them both. Now I've gotta dry these and I wanna show you something really cool. I'm not sure if you guys remember the real Peter. I mention him quite a bit. He is an avid watcher and donator of the channel. Peter built me this amazing drying cabinet. I can now dry my film in half an hour. <laughs> this is absolutely insane. That's going to be a big game changer the next time I do a marathon. Absolutely. It's got a car filter at the top with a fan and it just blows everything straight down. Um, there's a hanger in there there's clips. There's the car filter with the fan and the clips and it's been an absolute godsend or should I say it's been an absolute Peter send. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to show you that and you know, Peter knows that I'm grateful, but I just wanted to express my gratitude one more time. I'm going to hang up my film to dry now. No waiting for you though. Here are today's highlights and my contact sheet. Contact sheets.
All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed those. Let's talk about the film and the camera. First thing that jumped out at me was that this film curled big time. It was hard to mount, and I'm sure it reduced the quality and sharpness during the scanning. On one of the photos, there was what looked like a weird stain or discoloration, and I checked the negative itself and I couldn't see anything on the negative, so I can only imagine it had something to do with the curl of the negative itself and the way that it scanned in. It happened on this one photo and no others. The color quality was almost 100% of the time better, one stop overexposed. I always took my shot first at what the light meter told me and then one stop or two stops overexposed and the one stop overexposed was almost always better. The underexposed shots tended to shift to blue. And one thing to note about the Spotmatic is that the older of the two models did fail once. You can see here that the shutter did not work properly. It's covering part of the frame. And that's a shame. That means I can't sell it as a working model. I'll have to sell it for parts. Overall, though, I think this is a win. I had two untested cameras and most of my shots turned out. Not all of them turned out, of course. You can see there's not an incredible amount of highlights for two rolls of film. And that's just me. Some days I shoot and I think I've got a bunch of winners, like day 16 of a fortnight of film where I got two of my favorite photos of the year on the same day. And other days are like this where I blow two rolls of film and I've just got a handful of shots that I'm semi proud of. The main thing here though is I set out to test out two cameras in order to sell them and one I'm going to be able to sell as a film tested camera that is in working condition and the other I'm going to sell for parts. Some of these images came out way better than expected. While most of them needed a minor color correction, some of them were just spot on from the get go. And those minor color corrections could be from the scanner and not the film itself. Considering how much it curled, there are some really great shots on here. And you can tell that NPH 400 just renders color beautifully. And as I said before, most of the images that required an adjustment, they tended to shift towards blue, with a few of them shifting towards magenta. A minor correction, and it looked just fine. And of course, the biggest turn off for me was the curl. This is probably going to prevent me from using this batch of film because I've got like 10 rolls of it still um, for anything super important. I'm likely to use this film for experiments or just casual shooting. And now my thoughts on the Spotmatic. I don't like Spotmatics. I know that's sacrilege, but it's the truth. I think the M42 mount is great because of its compatibility but it's hard to actually mount the lens. When you use a bayonet style lens and camera mount, you can almost come in sideways with that thing sometimes. You can come in at an angle and kind of anchor your lens into the camera and then snap and it's in place. But an M42 mount, it uh, you can screw up the threading, you can you have to be straight on when you when you thread that thing on there. It's fussy, I think it's fussy. That's just me. Maybe you have a steadier hand than I do, but I don't like a thread mount for my lens. I also need a special battery to use the meter, and they're not easy to come by apparently. I had a look, and I saw them on Amazon for like 42 bucks each or something like that. I did see them on a battery outlet online, but I can't wait for that, and I don't like buying a battery that I'm only going to be able to use for one camera. I like my LR44s. They work with probably hundreds of cameras. Plus there's no hot shoe, so I can't even mount my Reveni Labs light meter. I had a really hard time focusing too. Not only do I prefer a split prism focusing system, but I don't like having to stop down and losing that light before I take the shot. Now I know there's a switch on the lens, so you can go to automatic, and then there's another switch on the side of the camera, so you can stop down at the last minute. But a guy like me, I'm going to forget something like that. So I just stop down ahead of time, and that means less light in my viewfinder, which means it's even harder to focus. It's, uh, it's a personal preference like anything else, but yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I've never liked, I've never liked that style of shooting. I know some people, it makes absolutely no difference to them. 
But for me, I like having a nice bright viewfinder from start to finish. So yeah, it's basically a K1000, but crappier. <laughs> I think you should just go for a K1000 unless there is a very specific lens that you want to buy that's an M42 mount and you happen to want to put it on a Spotmatic. I probably think that there are better M42 mount cameras out there as well. Don't be angry, it's just a camera. These are just my personal opinions. If you bought one already, I'm sure you're gonna be happy with it, but I think there are a lot better Pentax cameras out there. And that's just, that's just what I think. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. I found it a test in creativity, trying to find those pops of color in a very dull environment, such as Calgary in the winter, um, it was a challenge. I think I found some interesting pops of color. I think I got a couple of interesting shots. I think that I probably could have done a better job in black and white considering what I was presented with, but that's the way it goes. And it's a shame that uh, Pro 400H is being discontinued. It's not for lack of sales. Apparently it's a chemical or a supply type of deal. I don't really understand. But yeah, so rest in peace, Pro 400H. Now I guess we're just forced to shoot Portra, which sucks because you can bet that Kodak is going to jack up their prices next year again. If you like what I do around here, perhaps you'll consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll get things like early access, your name in the credits, and even free prints. I've also recently added a Discord. We're chatting up a storm there. It starts at a dollar. Come on down and say hi. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and until next time, stay classic. Classic.